This build focuses on making a smaller milker that can fit in a toolbox using parts I already have. Usually, size and sound aren't much of a consideration, but I've always wanted to have a case of some sort for the machines, rather than a bundle of sharp aluminum and cables. Mounting the machine inside just for use is fairly trivial, however, I'm still working out a way to mount it securely enough that it could be shipped. The major design change is to replace the tie rod with a turntable bearing. They're also called Lazy Susan bearings. This wouldn't work on a thrusting machine that requires a fixed linear track, but it's not a problem for milkers. The bearings are completely exposed, and the grease will catch any dust and debris. The added friction might cause some noise, but it isn't enough to have a notable effect. The materials list is not complete. I usually try to only use off-the-shelf parts, but this build has a lot of custom printed parts. First thing we need to do is drill our mounting holes in the frame for both the motor and the Lazy Susan bearing. To make sure the holes are accurate, um, I use a template created from the technical diagrams that you can get with the motor. You can print a PDF off, tape it directly to the frame to drill through. In this case, uh, a 3D printed uh, template that has the holes for the motor and the Lazy Susan bearing all in the same piece. And I just put a little lip on the edge so it stays in line. Before we mount the bearing to the frame, it's a lot easier to take the cylinder mount and attach that to the Lazy Susan bearing with some M4 screws. So we end up with something like this. The next thing we'll do is we'll attach the bearing and cylinder mount to the frame again with uh, M4 screws. Now we'll mount the motor. And we're going to do it in line. One thing about this motor, the body of the motor sticks out further than the face we're going to mount on. So to make sure we have a flat surface, I just printed up a little spacer that just fits in and make sure the Face that's going to be mounted on to the frame is is fat uh, flat rather. So that is the motor mounted. So once the cylinder mount, Lazy Susan bearing, and motor are all mounted to the frame, we can put the rocker arm on the motor shaft. Uh, there's a key slot we have to line up, but before putting it on, we'll just assemble part of it. This is an M8 uh, carriage bolt, the square part fits in the slot, and that prevents this from turning. And then I have just a M8 nut in a little 3D printed case, and all that really does is, once this is tightened, if you need to adjust the stroke, you can just do it by hand very easily. All right, so I have a M3 heatsink nut right in there. We're just going to line that up with the key slot on the shaft, press it in, and 
Let's take a M3 bolt. Let's get that tightened. Once that's done, we're just gonna use a eight millimeter thrust bearing. And what the thrust bearing allows is you can put a lot of force down on it, but it won't prevent rotation. That's critical I mean, anything like this. If, if the downforce is directly onto a nut as the motor turns, it'll either tighten or loosen that nut and it'll be bad. So I'm gonna use an M16i clevis. The, the rod's M16 threaded. Normally I use a Y clevis. They're actually half the cost of these. It's about six bucks each and these are about 12. Not a big deal for one, but. So I just printed a reducer to take the 16 millimeter hole to eight millimeters for the carriage bolt. That just pops in. Now we can put this on. Another thrust bearing on top. Nut. So now we can actually put the cylinder into the mount. And the reason I'm turning it is just to point these holes upwards slightly. So it's much easier to access. Okay, that's tightened. So before tightening this down, um, I'm just moving it by hand, making sure that it doesn't go too far out of the stroke range for the cylinder. Um, so put the stroke up a little bit, make sure it can go all the way in and it can go all the way out and nothing is hitting it on the frame. One thing to note is when you put your cylinder on is the location of your air holes. You don't want them covered by anything. Um, they both need to be completely open, even though we're only going to use um, the rear. I'll just tighten this down. So once that's attached, again, just make sure everything moves. There we go.